Carabelle, Florida, home of the world's smallest police station, right next to this bench that bears its name. Here it is, world's smallest police station, city of Carabelle, Florida. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back. As you can see, we're here in Carabelle, Florida, right next to the world's smallest police station. Uh, we the have been the only one there is, apparently. <laughs> I don't know, or so the, the phone booth says, and who's to, you know. Who's to argue with Carabelle. Ex exactly. So anyway, we have been spending, and we are going to spend some time here in Carabelle, Florida, because uh, that is currently where my parents are camping. Yeah. They uh, travel full time in an RV and uh, they are making their descent down more towards the central Florida area. Um, so this is where they are now and thus we have spent Thanksgiving with them. Yes, we did. That was exciting and fun and they picked a great place to stay for Thanksgiving. This is a beautiful little it is coastal beautiful. town. And I'm really enjoying our stay. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna be um, just exploring the area and seeing different things. There's a lot to do and see here in this beautiful small town of Carabelle and the towns around it. So it's basically just gonna kind of be a sightseeing, there we go. sightseeing day. So we're gonna have fun together. Yep. I'm glad you guys are coming too. Me too. So <laughs> without further ado, let's go. Let's get going. So evidently way back in the day, uh, there was a phone booth here in Carabelle, actually right down the street from where we are right now. And um, the police chief people around here would uh, would answer calls, Yeah, this I guess. was placed here just because uh, there was a police officer by the name of Chief Alvin Westberg walking the beat. And I guess he, he didn't have a way to communicate back to headquarters, so they installed a phone booth mm -hmm. so he could make calls, but. Yeah, people started making prank calls and started vandalizing it well, and they found out what was whatnot. going on. They took advantage and had their own fun with the situation. So yeah. Pranking this thing. Exactly. Some people even trying to take it away. Yeah. So it's it's no longer a thing, but they still have a kind of like little stand here to sort of no represent what it used to be. And now it is now it's just a classic roadside attraction here in Carabelle, <laughs> Florida. Yeah, it actually reminds me a lot of what they do in uh, in London, or at least what they used to do in London. I honestly have no idea. I just know that this reminds me oh, of the, the TARDIS from oh, it's the same Doctor Who. It's like the exact same principle where it's a phone booth. But trust me, it is not bigger on the inside. We, uh, we tried that out. If it were red, I'm thinking uh, Bill and Ted's. There you go. Before we continue onward though, we're going to stop at the Carabelle Junction, home of the 50 cent coffee. It's just right down the street, right over there. Here it is, Carabelle Junction. Looks like a really cute little kitschy diner here. Just zooming in on the sign. I really like that, Carabelle Junction. It's on, the, it's on Saturn. There's Saturn back there, a little rocket ship that says good food. And as we sit here sipping our coffees on top of this really awesome table filled with old vintage Florida postcards, Ooh, I wanna say that this video's coffee is thanks to Angela. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Cheers, I hope you enjoy this one. And yes, that is Bok Tower. We gotta get back to Bok Tower very, very soon. And that was really awesome. We both very much enjoyed the Carabelle Junction. Very cool inside of there. Very nostalgic, tons of antiques. Super unique. We are still both incredibly full from Thanksgiving, so we didn't get anything to eat, but we are thoroughly enjoying our coffees. In any case, we went directly across the street. We're gonna head over and check out the Carabelle Waterfront Historic District cool. directly in front of us. Jay and I kind of read up a little bit on Carabel and this area in general. It's known as Florida's Forgotten Coast, which I think is a very interesting uh, name for it, quite frankly. But this whole area, not just Carabel, but the surrounding towns around here 
are known, very, very well known for their, uh, for their seafood. A lot of seafood going on around here. Now, of course, lots of Florida is known for its seafood. We are, of course, on the sea, but um, Carabelle specifically, and again, like the neighboring towns, very well known for oysters specifically, as well as shrimp and um, fish and blue crab, scarily enough. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Lots of really, uh, really good, I'm sure, seafood restaurants and um, places where you can buy fresh seafood around here. We're staring, of course, right in front of us, a really legit looking uh, fishing boat here. It's got all the nets and stuff that one would need to get those shrimpies and whatever other horrifying sea creatures uh, there are. So I thought that was pretty cool. We're gonna be seeing some some sea stuff today, some nautical stuff. Scooch down a little bit further to get some pictures of the boat and then uh, looked over to my left and check out this dock. It's uh, well, it's seen better days. I would, if I had to guess, hurricane damage, that's usually what it is when you see a lot of destruction like that. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. It's gonna take a while to, uh, to rebuild that. And also down over here by this boat, there's uh, some some lobster cages down there. Cages for those horrifying, horrifying creatures of the deep. As you can hear, it's very quiet out here. Mm -hmm. As you were just saying, you can definitely see why they perhaps have called it Florida's Forgotten Coast. Definitely. Very I like quiet. this place. Yeah, I like it a lot too. It is really, it's been really cool to like see all of these boats and the marinas and the really cool houses all the way back there on the stilts. Like it's, it is really neat. And here's something you don't see every day. Cacti and seashells. Yeah. Although, you just said it was an oyster shell. These are oyster shells? Those are oyster shells, yeah. Wow. Someone was probably eating them and just shucked, I, them, and shucked them over. I don't know, because I've been seeing them everywhere along this walk. We are in, uh, a, yeah, we are in oyster country. We right? are, yeah. so that's very interesting. But yeah, cacti and seashells. The best of both worlds. Yet more boats over here as well. I have to admit, I really, really, really like this one. The Ginger G. You can see that. Oh, I thought that said Ginger Six. Yeah, the Ginger G. Zooming in here, you can see that uh, there's a lot of love that's gone into this boat. Maybe even a houseboat. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Definitely looks very lived in, but I, I really, really like it. It's very, very eclectic. Oh, well, we've got spooky pelican alerts over here. The big old pelicans just swimming around, waiting for some fish. They probably won't have to wait too long. Yeah. It smells incredibly fishy around here. Right down below us, I just happened to notice there's a ton of oyster shells right here. Now that may, be, that may not be natural. Maybe somebody just dropped a bunch of oyster shells or, or something, because it's really just in that one spot. But nonetheless, there they are. See, I told you all, it's oyster shitty. See, I told you. Up in here, see? And we have some signage. Carabelle Riverwalk Wharf. Right along the Carabelle River. So that's what we've been walking along this whole time. There's also a bunch of these horrifying turtles sitting out here for, I guess, for the kids maybe to climb around on. That's cool. Lots of sea turtles around here as well. I've seen a lot of, a lot of signs for them. But also, not just sea turtles. Right next to this fish cleaning station, which I don't even want to go into how horrifying that is. Uh, there's a turtle. There's a little turtle. This one's not a sea turtle. Oh, I'm not gonna, not gonna touch you. Don't worry. We'll zoom in here. 
Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to scare you. I won't go any further. You can put your little head back out and keep on a walking if you want. There you go. There you go. See, I'm friendly. I'm not gonna kill you or try to eat you. I promise. There he goes. He's like, all right, I'm just gonna walk away from this crazy lady now. I got stuff to do. I got turtle stuff to do. I don't got time for you and your YouTube channel, lady. Well, I got important things to do. Like, be a turtle. Alrighty. Well, bye then. And Tampa J just informed me that all of that stuff on the ground there... Uh... Uh, fins. Not fins, but the, the scales. That's the word. Scales. On fish. Oh... My gosh. You know what? I was just thinking how cool it would be to live in a maritime, a little maritime village like this. But you know what? I don't think I can handle it because I am deathly afraid of fish and shellfish and uh, the sea life in general. And that is horrific. And I, I'm just, I need to walk away from the situation right now. Instead, we're going to check out something equally horrific. Look at this. These, uh, these dolphins that are stuck inside of the ground, Tampa J. What happened? Only, only their faces are above surface ground. There's, this must be quicksand or, or something. I don't know what's going on here, but this is pretty, this is pretty scary. This is one of the scariest things I've ever seen. So what do you think of Carabel so far? I think it's a hidden gem of a town. I think it's the perfect place for someone or you know a couple like us that just wants to get away and experience like what florida is really like like an old coastal community yeah. um it's got everything you need and we're right in the middle of you know panama cities that way mm -hmm. and just south of tallahassee if you like wildlife if you like seafood fishing if you just, even if you don't like that if you just want to you know hang out in a yeah small nice town, quiet spot carabelle good good option i've i have to admit i've haven't spent too much time in the panhandle myself yeah me too um and First i've time. definitely never been here or seen really anything like this in florida before and i'm very very much enjoying it and it just kind of proves that like florida all right i'm not like the hugest proponent of florida let's offer. let's let's be honest here but it does have a lot to offer all kinds of different scenery from you know the nightlife and tourist attractions and disney and whatnot to small coastal places like this to the forest to yeah. all all kinds of stuff and it always amazes me you know i've lived here most of my life and there's still so many things that i haven't seen yet yeah and uh seeing new things every other weekend also, it seems like out that up here in this spot specifically i looked at this last night we are 12 hours from key west wow six hours from walt disney world that shows you how large florida is folks huge state yep yeah huge even though carabelle is a small town they actually have well they had quite a lot to do and to see as i mentioned before but they also have a lot of different museums there's three museums here all of them are free and this is the first one that we have come up against the carabelle history museum yeah. and it looks like it's open the look of the inside in here there's a lot to see in here a lot to read a lot to check out man this is awesome and in this room here looks like we have a bunch of fishing exhibits and whatnot now they also have the sponges here as well just like tarpon springs this looks like a little miniature version of the people grabbing the sponges and putting them out for people so that's one of the things that they do of course you got the old 20,000 leagues under the sea helmets here as well but yeah there's a there's sponge places here as well which is pretty cool oh look at that 1990 local diver Marshall SpongeBob Foster. I don't, his pants are even square too. Wow, that's amazing. So it looks like they have some interactive stuff that you can do here as well, which I always love in museums. Try your hands at being an oysterman with these 
miniature tongs. So they got some oyster shells in here and I'm guessing that's how they get oysters. I can only assume using these, uh, these tongs. I had no idea. And in this room here, they have a whole Carabelle High School exhibit inside of here. And it's pretty neat because they have old yearbooks yeah, and whatnot campus. over here as well. So if you went to Carabelle High School or maybe you had someone in your family who did or friends or whatever, this would be a great place to stop by and look up some old photos, yeah. uh, some old information. These, so these are trophies and awards in here. Very cool. And it looks like they have gone through a couple of mascots, a few mascots throughout the years. They started off as the mullets, and then <laughs> were the green devils, and then the panthers. I have to admit, I kind of like the mullets the best. The mullets. Why not? No way. Mullets isn't a, a, the, fish. the fish. Mullet born, mullet bred, and when I die, I'll be mullet dead. That's amazing. <laughs> Something else that is really cool about this museum is that it is actively trying to find out information. Like, so this whole desk area here, they're trying to identify people. They have a whole stack of photos in here and it's asking for people to look through them and see if they can identify any of these people. Very, very kind of similar to what we've been trying to do. Oh, there you go. Researching our family history and finding out more about our heritage and whatnot. It's one of my favorite things about archiving in general and whatnot is you're, you're kind of like an, a detective. The very beginning of the video, we saw the world's smallest police station. And here is the actual real one that was used. So the one that we saw was like a replica sort of thing. And then this one here at the Carabelle History Museum is the actual one. Very cool. Very small. That's for darn sure. Also in this room is a bunch of noteworthy citizens from Carabelle, like Mr. Buck O'Neill here, which I guess he was a baseball player. He is. Recently inducted into the Baseball, baseball Hall of Fame. Fame. January 2022. Yeah, born in Carabelle. And over here, they talk about Classy B. Lowry, a citizen here that was here in Carabelle. She apparently uh, birthed 19 children, raised seven more. She would rescue children whose mothers could not handle the responsibility of caring for a child to keep them out of the custody of the state. Also, Dot Glisten over here, first woman on Florida cabinet, apparently was born here in Caribou as well. Now upstairs on the second level, they have a shipwreck exhibit up here. So we're gonna check this out, but first I wanted to show this really cool mural of, uh, well, of Florida. Shows you everything. You got the wild turkeys, you got the turtles, the alligators, the bears, the deer. It's got it all. Shipwrecks of Dog Island. Dog Island is not too far from here. And, oh, okay, cool. This, uh, this sign over here, I like what it says. Shipwrecks are time capsules of history. The mysteries of our past are fascinating to unravel, and we all share a common history. When an ancient site is disturbed or destroyed, what could we learn from, is, from it is gone forever. The shape of the head of a nail can convey crucial historical information. Most items taken out of context do not have as much of a story to tell. What can you do to help preserve, to help the preservation of our history. Very interesting. And of course, that's what places like this are so amazing for. These museums keeping the history of such an important little town here. A lot of ships were wrecked in hurricanes. These photos taken in 2018 after Hurricane Michael. All of these photos yeah, in here. Cool. Lots of photos of 
Oh yeah, shipwrecks. This is really cool over here as well. They have a bunch of books, huge books over here with uh, the Carabelle Times. Old um, newspaper. Very cool. And one of the interesting things about that boat is it's a freighter, but they outfitted it, Mr. Mr. Plant, who was a railroad industrial. Oh, Henry mm -hmm. B. Plant, yeah. right there. Know him very well. He, uh -huh. um, he outfitted it with 16 passenger cabins, and he intended to put it in service between Tampa and Cuba. But he decided, well, when the Spanish-American War came, that interrupted that plan. And then he ended up passing away before he could get anything really done with it. So they sold it to the Pensacola St. Andrews and Gulf Steamship Company up here in the Panhandle. And it was birthed in Mobile, Alabama. And for, from 1902 to 1937, every week it went Monday to Pensacola, Tuesday, Panama City, Wednesday, Apalachicola, and Thursday to Carabell. So if you think about Carabell's on an island, we're on St. James Island, there were no bridges here until the late 1930s. So everything had to come on a boat or swim or fly in on their wings because mm -hmm. that was the only way to get here. So the tarpon became a more, a very significant part of developing the town. And they used to, the locals used to call it our Queen Mary. Captain Barrow had two fatal flaws that ended up getting him killed. One of them, was he never checked the weather. And he kind of had this attitude about, God makes the weather and I make the trip. However, his family says it was more like, God makes the weather and God willing, I make the trip. Yeah. Oh, okay. But we're not too sure which attitude was the right one. But anyway, um, he was 82 years old when the boat sank. Oh, wow. And had been the only captain on the tarpon. And he didn't like those newfangled gadgets like radios. So they didn't have a radio. Either one of those things could have saved them in the storm. So they, so they left Pensacola on a Tuesday in 37. They did not know that there was a Category 3, there was a hurricane coming. Hurricane coming. So they ended up getting hit, surprised by a Category 3 hurricane. Our hero of my story is this young man here in the newspaper clipping, Adley Baker. And Adley was a young oiler in the um, engine room, very energetic, and had a brand new baby and everything to live for. And he says, okay guys, what are we gonna do to save ourselves? And these, I always think about these guys being the old codgers. The old codger says, oh, we're just gonna all get eaten by sharks. You know, there's nothing we can do. We don't know where we are. We don't know what's what. And he said, well, think about it. We were approaching the sea buoy at Panama City. There's a landmass right there. It has to be Panama City. So we just need to go there and get help. Well, nobody would go. And so he finally said, okay, I'm going. So he starts swimming towards the landmass. And it turned out, he did not realize it, but it was he was 25 miles from shore. Oh, wow. So he gets 10 miles in, and by then his arms and legs are just cramping, and he can't swim anymore, and he starts to drown. And the sound of Adley drowning caused um, a pot of dolphins to come, and they actually um, got down in the water underneath him, pushed him to the surface, flipped him over and held him up in the water so he could breathe. Wow. For That's amazing. As long as it took until he was able to get himself to resuscitate. Holy moly. And so he finally, once he got where he could take charge of himself, they just kind of backed off and followed him, never left him, but they didn't hang there with him. So he's swimming along. He gets a couple of miles from shore and the dolphins realized there were no humans where he was swimming to. So he was not going to get rescued. So they come back. They get on either side of him. They redirect where he's swimming around the land to a beach over in Panama City Beach. 
where they, there were two guys surveying for a road and they saw him crawl out on the beach where the dolphins took him and they actually came and got him, took him to the police. The police teletyped Coast Guard and said, tarpons down near the sea buoy, um, need latitude longitude for rescue. But thanks to Adley being brave and the dolphins being a little bit of divine intervention, I mm -hmm. think they managed to all survive. That's wow. awesome. That is amazing. That amazing story? Holy That's a moly. great story. I appreciate yeah, you telling us that. Yeah, thank you. And that was awesome. The Carabelle History Museum. All right, and that was awesome. The Carabelle History Museum. We sure learned a lot of stuff in there. And uh, the folks running it were super nice, super informative. And um, yeah, we, we learned a lot definitely worth a visit those are the special places that i love to visit and i know you love to visit as well yeah. um the the history museums uh run by people who actually live here in carabelle and are obviously so incredibly passionate about what they do and uh informative and whatnot so you know it's not the hugest museum in the world, but we could have easily spent our entire day in there because it's just jam-packed, filled with items and artifacts and things to read and, and all kinds of different stuff. And it's just amazing to me when people take so much pride in the city that they live in and um, care so much about, about history to preserve it in that way. It's, it's just really, really special to me it's one of my favorite things me in the too. world so i'm so glad that we stopped in there that is a gem yeah, that is a gem well over there together. so their heart's in the right place it really is yeah. yeah so if you're if you're coming here to carabelle i would definitely recommend popping in there and giving it a look-see next up is the carabelle bottle house one of the classic roadside attractions that they have here in carabelle and of course we had to come check it out. I think I remember reading that they are working on adding stuff like adding bottle buildings to this area because I think it started off with the house, the Just bottle the house. house, but they have a lighthouse here as well. Here we are at the base of the lighthouse as well. Just gonna pan up kind of slowly here for you so you can see all the detail that they've put into here all the different kinds of bottles and they got some wine bottles up at the top as well that's really cool definitely definitely would have taken a lot of time to to build that's for sure i like it like how they've used all the different kind of colors of bottles here is the bottle house itself so we can actually open up the door and go inside and that's exactly what we're going to do. This structure here is made out of a bunch of different kinds of bottles. The lighthouse was just one specific kind of different colors, but this actually has like square bottles in here and a bunch of different sizes and shapes and colors. It is really, really pretty. We're doing this, we're going inside. All right, here we go. Okay. Get your reaction. All right. Oh, cool. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. So all the bottle butts that we saw on the oh, outside <laughs> is, uh, they're all actual bottles. And then you can see all the, the tippity tops yeah. on the inside in here. Wow. That's amazing. So the Carabelle Bottle House completed in 2012. The Bottle House is a pentagonal structure built of over 6,000 mm. glass bottles. It has all of the information on there for you if you want to pause and read it also talks about the lighthouse stands 15 feet tall and completed in 2013. it is very very beautiful in here how the light hits all of the different kinds of bottles when we were looking this place up it's definitely as the kids would say Instagram worthy. You can take yeah. lots of really cool, pretty photos in here. I just love that they used, again, all kinds of different bottles here. There's huge 
round jugs in all kinds of different beverages that they've used as well. I like how some of it is uniformed, like all of these same bottles here, all going yeah. in that direction there, and yet a bunch of other bottles are not uniformed at all. It's just really cool, really whimsical. Well balanced. I like it. We closed it back up and now we're gonna head out. Proof, we closed Proof. it. Proof, we closed it. Although we didn't see any doggies, see any doggies. No. unfortunately, no. but that's okay. We got some doggies waiting for us back home. Doggy, Bella. Some doggies, Bill and, and Daisy. Daisy. We're driving past the beach now. The first time Terrible I've seen beach. the beach out here. It is incredibly foggy though. You can, you really can't see very far out there. It's a good thing they invented lighthouses because you would need it today if you're out there on a boat. That's what it's Holy for. moly. And I remember reading something last night that Carabelle and this area in general is very big on migrating birds and butterflies. We have seen a heck of a lot of butterflies around here today. All these monarch butterflies, also a lot of bees. I mean, just look at them all. I don't know if I've ever seen so many butterflies in one spot besides like a butterfly house or something like that. They are everywhere. Speaking of everywhere, our next stop has us at the World War II Museum, the second free museum that they have here in Carabelle. So I don't think that I'm going to show too much in here or around here. Tampa J is going to show a lot more of this particular spot. So if you're interested in this part of it, and just in general, be sure to check out Tampa J's Vidya. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna film. Parts of this place are pretty darn creepy. Like this one. Guess it's giving like a example of what a, what a, I don't know, army barrack would look like, I'm assuming. Got some records in here. He's got some Hershey's chocolate and Butterfingers as well. Some hair tonic. Looks like he's playing some cards. Yeah, he's just hanging out here, airing out his laundry. Waiting for dark so he can come alive and wreak havoc on us all. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to show. Behind me here. This museum is quite large, by the way. Lots of reading material, lots of things yet again to see and to look at. And to do. So if this is your jam, you're definitely going to want to check this out. And again, Tampa J is taking more uh, footage of it all than I am specifically in here. So if you want to see more of it, be sure to check out his video. Okay. Goodbye, sir. See you later. And finally, we have made it to the last museum here in Carabelle, the Crooked River Lighthouse Park. We're gonna go see a lighthouse. And here it is, the Crooked River Lighthouse. This is a very interesting one because of like all of the metal, uh, I don't wanna say pipes, but all of the, all of the metal work around it. Usually they're, they're a little bit more solid than this. I, I want, yeah, I wonder if it's more like hurricane friendly. I could only assume, but uh, nonetheless, it's a lighthouse. I do love me my lighthouses. Check it out. You can even climb the darn thing. You want me to take Look inside of there. It's a huge spiral staircase type deal. Over a hundred. What do you think? Steps. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I feel about this. Let me be honest with you. 127 steps. Alright, we're scoping it out. Yeah. Notice the sign right there. It says, leave the tower immediately. Oh my gosh. At the sound of thunder or if you see lightning. That's a good thing to do. Which happens yeah. all the time here in Florida. Yeah. So apart from the fact that I don't necessarily feel like climbing 127 steps in a circle, uh, it's very, very high up, and I have a fear of heights. So I think 
Tampa J is going to go up and check it out and then I will view it from the bottom. Apart from the scary lighthouse though, they do have a museum in gift shop. So we're gonna go inside and check it out. This will be the final stop on our museum crawl here in Carabelle. Oh, look at the little lighthouse. That's adorable. Yeah, this will be our final stop as far as the museums go. So this museum and gift shop is actually the light keeper's house. Lighthouses have to have a keeper keeping track of it. Keeping the light steadily growing every night was a big challenge as well as a noble task. The duty of guiding vessels through dangerous waters was taken very seriously. So we are standing inside of the original keeper's house for a uh, for this particular lighthouse and of course they've had multiple different kinds of keepers all throughout the uh all throughout the years keepers and assistant keepers they have some photos and artifacts and whatnot in here in this room here we have a bunch of different parts of the lighthouse including the Original, original lighthouse, lighthouse Fresno lens. Fresno lens. There's a sign. 1895. Right here for you. There you go. On display here. Also, a bunch of different kinds of schematics and blueprints for the lighthouse. And I was noticing this photo here. Mm -hmm. Many questions remain as to exactly how the tower was put together using technology of the late 1890s. This photo here is the only known photograph showing the construction of this particular oh, nice. tower. So this would just like shine the light like further or I don't understand optics, I don't know. We looked all around to see what exactly a Fresnel or apparently Fresnel lens is, but I couldn't find anything. So it's something I'm gonna have to Google later as to what exactly this is. Obviously it goes inside of the lighthouse. The one uh, that's in there now is apparently a fourth generation Fresnel lens. This was the first one here. So I don't know, but it's something to do with the lighthouse and shining the light. I know I sound not very smart right now, but I don't know, like I said, much about optics or lighthouses or anything like that, but it's definitely something I could research into a bit further. Also, revisiting this photograph, apparently I was kind of right. Uh, these are called skeletal lighthouses and they're much more stable than the brick and mortar structures and capable of being taken apart and relocated if necessary. Having lost three brick towers in, on Dog Island to violent storms, it proved a wise decision to erect a skeletal metal tower. So there you go. It's there more or less because of those those pesky hurricanes. Okay, we you're go. heading up. Crooked River Lighthouse. Here I go. Here you go. All right, I'll be at the bottom. All right, I'll film it. Cheering you on. Okay. I'll be back. Good luck. Here he goes. Very up. Hey, I hear someone down there. Up the steps. Bye-bye, Tampa J. Good luck. I think what I will go ahead and climb though, this playground structure here. Clearly meant for children. But as there are not any children around here for me to disturb their play, I will climb up here, which alone is rather terrifying and uh view from this vantage point over here at least for the time being he should be poking his head out through that window yeah i think you're halfway up okay working off that turkey i'm over here yep oh thank you how is the climb Okay, good. Okay, and there there he is. He just sent me this photo of him up top of the lighthouse. So if you want to see that footage, of course, you got to watch Jay's 
video. He sent me another one. Hold on. Here's the inside of it too with that uh, Fresnel light or Fresnel, I think it was pronounced. Fourth generation. And look at that. They have an explanation of what it is in there. Well, that just figures. I guess I had to climb all those steps to find out what it is, but that's okay. Jay sent me a photo of it so I can read it at my leisure later. How was it? Oh, it's fun. Yeah? So near the top, uh huh. it's more like a ladder. Okay. So yeah, it gets very steep. Yeah. Although, um, you know, it wasn't much of a view because of the fog. Right. Still fun. Still pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, still cool sight. And there were wasps up there. Yeah. Right. I saw the raid in one of the pictures you sent me. Yeah, it was fun though. Cool. And with Tampa Jay's descent back down to us normies on the ground, that's going to do it for today's video. We set off today thinking we were going to do one thing <laughs> and, and we did a bunch of different goes. things. I mean, we did what we wanted to do, but also... And more. And, and more, but also less because there's so much to do in this area um we didn't even fit it all in so we're hoping to do that over the next couple of days, yeah, as, we're, a couple more days. as we're spending time here but this was really awesome just checking out this one cool little town of carabel florida so much to do and so much to see and and as i literally just said we didn't even see it all so yeah Really, really, really awesome. Very much enjoyed the museums and, and the people that work there who are obviously very uh, passionate about what they do and and just learning more about about the city of Carabelle. So I love that and I really enjoyed today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. This is one of our both of our favorite things to do is just exploring exploring towns like this and of course taking you all along with us so um yeah and um i kind of said this before but it's the day after thanksgiving so happy belated thanksgiving to everybody hopefully you had a great day we spent the day with my parents um as i said earlier that's why we're here here in the first place is uh, my parents are rving down here so um, we got to spend thanksgiving with them yesterday it was really really fun um, great time fellowship ate some good food yep and, and yeah just spent, made some awesome memories yeah just spent some time together I really appreciate um i started filming some stuff at the beginning of the day yesterday i didn't have intentions of putting it out on the channel as a as a video or anything i just kind of wanted to mark the occasion and do some like home video filming so um i still i actually didn't end up filming for like a lot of yeah the day i kind of just I wasn't dropped sure. it because i was just spending <laughs> i just wanted to spend time with yeah with my family and whatnot and not worry about yeah, that's important the camera but i did capture some things so i'm actually going to put that at the very end Bonus of this features. video uh some of what i filmed from yesterday from thanksgiving but um hopefully you all had a great day and um yeah uh, Merry Christmas everybody because now that Thanksgiving is officially over we got to move on to the next holiday and 2022 is basically out the door so um, that being all said thank you all so much for watching we have a couple more days in the panhandle here and we have a lot of stuff a lot of ideas, lot of ideas. in our head we don't have firm plans yet because there's so much that we want to do and see so we will see what happens and of course spend time with my parents as well and um yeah make sure you check out tampa jay's video because he you. did have his camera here too and as i said all throughout this video he captured a lot of different things than what i captured on here as always so thank you all so much for watching hopefully you had a good time and we'll see you all very very soon Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. We're gonna go home. Subscribe to Chris the girl. We're gonna Give it a eat up. some leftovers and spend time with my folks. It was a fun day. It was. I loved it. Yep. And I love you. I love you. Here we go. Here we go. Turkey sandwich time. Yeah. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bella is enjoying her stay so far because most of the windows here are her her length. Perfect for beagle viewing. A 
of the outside world. Happy Thanksgiving, Billa. Happy Thanksgiving, like, Billa. Why are those things floating in the water? It's <laughs> not natural. What is significant about this Thanksgiving is that it's our first Thanksgiving together as a couple, like in person. It's a very big moment. Together. We had to make it special and get a little Thanksgiving tabernacle hideaway kind of thing. Um, your parents are nearby. It all came together perfectly. It really did. And it's such a nice uh, area where they're camping and I'm mm -hmm. anxious to explore this place. You Me know? too, in the daytime. Yeah. And we're here for wait. four days, so. Yeah, it but, should be really nice. But yeah, so. our first Thanksgiving together and um, I'm so happy and grateful. Uh, to be here with you and be a part of your family and I was really looking forward to this myself so yeah me too Thanksgiving is yeah. a big deal for your family and for my family yeah. and yeah it's your first one first holiday with my family um, my first holiday well a lot of first yeah last year I was working on a school project by myself in my apartment That's in right. Hershey Pennsylvania so it's nice to and I was in family. Indiana, yep. and you know, I was like, man, I felt so bad that you were over there alone on Thanksgiving. So this year, I told you, 365 days ago, you weren't spending this Thanksgiving alone. So here you go. I'll take your word for it. I don't remember that. I did. Okay. It, just scroll up in your text message. Okay. That'll take a long time. <laughs> oh, and I don't have a hat. I love you. I love you. Bella the and Daisy meeting for the first time. First time meeting. Snip, snip, rip. That's yep. my spot. <laughs> Here you go. Good nice. job. Good. Very nice. Good job. Good job, Good. Billy. Yeah. Gotta sniff everything else too, though. Yep. That's yeah. That's your job too. It's like, what is this? Hmm. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so Jay is making green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. Ain't much to it delicious though. I don't know if I've ever had it before. No? Yeah, I don't think so. Not to my recollection. I hope I do it justice. Hopefully so. For the first time. Mmm. That might be getting close. 